Regular viewers on this channel will already be familiar with Dr. Tian Xu, who I've filmed a couple of interviews with previously as part of my Honest Expert series. Dr. Chen is an emergency doctor who trains other physicians and she has her own aesthetics practice in which she focuses on her three-step program of prevention, rejuvenation and enhancement. And the way she takes complicated technologies and biological processes and breaks them down into easy to understand information and advice has really impressed and helped me and I know a lot of you. So I'm happy to say you'll be seeing more of Dr. Chen on the channel, including today, because she's joined me to talk about tretinoin or synthetic vitamin A, which is used to treat acne, sun damaged skin, and the signs of aging. And with so much information already available about tretinoin on YouTube and the internet more widely, we're going to be looking at a few key questions around safety and long-term use and when the right time is to start and stop using tretinoin as well as the alternatives. Um, well, we're on to one of my favourite new subjects uh, today because we're talking about tretinoin and I know that you've used it in the past to help clear your skin and I've recently started using it for skin rejuvenation. So, I mean, I'm interested to know whether you see tretinoin as like a skincare extreme that we should only be used for a very limited period of time or whether it's a skin clearing, rejuvenating savior that we should embrace and feel comfortable using it day to day, long term. How do you see it? Well, um, I think tretinoin, uh, so for those of you who don't know what tretinoin is, it's basically a uh, precursor or, well, it's a, it's vitamin A, it's a form of vitamin A and vitamin A is what our skin cells need to uh, do lots of things, but essentially to regenerate, to help produce uh, collagen, to control the pigmentation, to control oil production. It does a lot of things for the cells and it's one of those really important vitamins that helps keep the skin cells healthy. Now, tretinoin is quite a potent form of vitamin A. Um, it's very effective because it's potent, but because it is potent, it can also have side effects and, and cause irritation in the skin. Mm. So I wouldn't say that tretinoin is something that everyone should use. Most people, when they first start using tretinoin, they are very likely to get a reaction from it. It doesn't mean they're allergic to it necessarily. They just need to find the right dose and the frequency for them. And they need a professional to really guide them. So I think it, th there's no easy answer to your question. I think it can be amazing for certain things, but it's not something that is right for everyone. Yes, as, as I'm coming to experience myself, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely sort of sticking with it. Um, I've been using it for a couple of months now, um, but I've had the breakouts of very dry, red skin, it's definitely um, something that is probably the, the, the harshest th thing I've used on my skin yet. I can definitely see that. What I am wondering is if we know of any actual risks, health risks associated with tretinoin. And I ask because um, I was put off using it for a long time after reading a few years ago that there had been a trial among a group of older veterans. And I think the trial was stopped after just six months because of an excessive and statistically significant number of excess deaths in the group. Now, I said it was back in 2009. There have been other studies, nothing like this, as far as I'm aware, from what I could see just by sort of looking around. I, I took the personal view that that trial was a bit of a one-off, a bit of a kind of freak occurrence, and um, I've decided to give it a go. I mean, have you got any concerns regarding its safety? I mean, nothing as severe as what you have just said, <laughs> to be completely honest. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how you came across that paper. And I actually, after you mentioned it, I had a look at it. Mm. My thoughts are that that paper, that, that study is not, is completely irrelevant to what we're trying to do with tretinoin and it's you know with we, we have to be quite careful when we are using something as evidence like you have mm. to compare apples with apples and you can't you can't compare something that's different so in yeah. that trial they were using 
Well, first of all, that trial was carried out on a group of older population that mean age was 71, I think. So people at that age, then naturally they have other reasons for, I guess, to potentially explain the, the deaths. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and then tretinoin was used topically, but to prevent a type of cancer, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's not, and how much was used, how frequently it was used, I it didn't really go into that much detail. I couldn't see the full text. So if if we're using a small amount of tretinoin to help stimulate the skin to for anti-aging effects, that is... I'm sure that's completely different to the regime that those people are using in that trial. And yeah. also at the end, in the conclusion of that paper, it said that the obviously the mortality rate was uh, significant, but they couldn't um, they couldn't link the mortality rate to the use of tretinoin because it wasn't yeah. it wasn't controlled enough. They couldn't control all the other factors, so it wasn't that wasn't the only factor. So yeah. And in view of, you know, that being the only paper I've heard of to, to link tretinoin to anything as, as negative as that, um, and tretinoin has been used so much, I've used it personally myself, and knowing how tretinoin works, I'm very happy to use it and to recommend it to my, my patients for those who it's suitable for. Um, there are milder alternatives which are just as effective and it's less irritating, it's nicer to use, like yeah. retinol, for example. So, um, but yeah, if for those people who do need to use tretinoin to treat a certain medical condition, I don't think they need to worry about the safety. So, you know, what, what circumstances would you recommend that, that someone try tretinoin? So tretinoin um, has several major uh, indications. So the main thing is if someone has got acne, you know, quite, quite severe breakout, or they just want a very um, kind of quick and potent anti-aging effect, as it were, um, something stronger than retinol, um, then potentially tretinoin is something that they can consider. So the tretinoin, really what it, what it does is it stimulates the cell regeneration. It just makes the cell gen grow faster. So it causes irritation because it, if the cell, if your skin's not used to it, it can't regenerate that, that fast. Mm. So it takes a while for the skin to get used to it. So the, then the skin, the top layers of skin starts to shed off while the bottom layers of skin are not ready yet to form that protective layer so you can get this kind of redness inflammation um that what we call a retinoid reaction mm -hmm. is quite common when people first start to use tretinoin um so it's quite important for people who do start to use it to, to really ease themselves in mm. and sometimes it can be a bit of a delay with the reaction you know if you start using it day one use it every day probably by day three you have this build up of the concentration of, of the of the tretinoin in the skin and then suddenly on day three day four your skin goes red and and raw and you know itchy or painful i normally say to people if they're going to start on tretinoin just use it every other night for yeah. a week and then can increase it um, and start with the lowest dose yes yeah that's definitely been my approach and that's that's been working so far because although i've had the side effects they've not been too bad i mean i can cover them up with um makeup and um you know, I would say at this point in time, eight weeks in, I'm probably just got a little more dryness than I usually would. When you use tretinoin for your skin, how quickly did you see the difference? For me personally, it took about um, four to six weeks, I remember, because I was, because <laughs> um, at the time when I first used it, it was when I was first learning about it. And I thought, let me try it on, my, on myself. So I was keeping a journal of uh, what my skin was like throughout e you know, each day of using it. And I think it was between about four to six weeks around that time when the peeling had reduced a lot. And because I first started using it because I, was ha I had this sort of inflammatory rosacea, which I thought was acne, mm -hmm. but it turned out to be rosacea. Um, and the so I started using it when I wasn't having such a severe flare up. I just want to point it out to people that if they are having the severe inflammation and infection, you know, infected spots, they need to just stabilize the skin a bit first before they start the tretinoin because otherwise okay. it might be too irritating. 
So I started using when my skin was kind of a bit more stable, just a bit of a rash, but no, you know, major spots and infections or anything. Um, my skin was peeling every day for about a month because I sort of went in quite hard. <laughs> just, you know, went from nothing to using um, eight products a day at the time because I had started a whole skincare routine to try to clear up my skin. So it wasn't just tretinoin, it was lots of things. It was exfoliating agents, Ooh. tretinoin, plus hydroquinone and the sunscreen. And yeah, so <laughs> it was quite Ouch. a lot to do that. And then I, once I got the result that I wanted, things stabilized, then I weaned myself off that because the tretinoin is quite potent. And actually, mm -hmm. if you don't have major problems in your skin, you don't want to be constantly stimulating your skin that much. So then yeah. once you get to a stable stage and you're happy with your skin, it is better to step down to something like a retinol um, or a very low dose tretinoin, maybe once a week or something. If you're using it for anti-aging, is it something that you just continue to use? What would you recommend? Definitely don't use it to the point where it's still causing peeling every single day. I think if you are in week eight and you're still having peeling every single day, it may be a bit too stimulating, especially if your okay. skin quality is, is okay, because you overstimulating is not good either. You know, your, your skin will, you want to keep it active, but not overly so. So mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. In the initial treatment phase, you do want to be a little bit more aggressive. You want to cause that, um, the, the peeling, the regeneration. But after the treatment phase, you kind of want the skin to have a period of recovery. Okay. Um, so it will be better to um, either reduce the dose or switch to retinol. And personally, I would switch to retinol and to continue retinol long term. And, and come off the tretinoin. Okay, um, I'm, I'm so spurred on by some of the results I've seen among other YouTubers who, some of whom even look like they've had a surgical eye lift. The tightening around, you know, just that using that tiny amount, I know you're not supposed to use it on the eye area, but just, even, <laughs> you know, you didn't hear this, um, but just what they do is they are applying it to their face and then, taking a tiny bit here and the, the results are absolutely remarkable. But they've all said that has taken a couple of years. I think um, the important thing is what is the active ingredient that what is the thing that's actually doing it? Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it really is the vitamin A. So tretinoin is kind of pretty much pure vitamin A, let's say, and you're putting that straight to the skin. Um, and it's quite potent. The area around the eyes are quite delicate. It, it can irritate you. It can really irritate yes. if you get yeah. into the eyes. It can cause serious problems. Um, retinol is also related to vitamin A. It's a, it's a precursor of vitamin A, which means in the skin cells, retinol is then converted to vitamin A, and then that exerts its effect. So in a sense, you are putting similar stuff onto your skin. It's just retinol mm -hmm. is a bit... Uh, less potent than tretinoin but it's yeah. a lot safer because you're once you get your skin to a, a point where it's quite active already you don't need a lot you don't need as much as you did at the beginning to maintain that level of activity okay and if you were to overstimulate the skin it can't give any more and that overstimulation can then cause irritation cause other problems okay so it's not a case of the, you know, the more, the better. It is the right amount is the better. <laughs> Actually, my personal approach is to start on the retinols. So retinol also come in different concentrations. The lowest dose is 0 0.025, I believe. And then you can get 0 0.05 and 0.1%. Yeah. So tretinoin is, the percentage of tretinoin is like um, 10 times as potent as retinol in terms of the conversion. I myself, I'm using a tiny, tiny dose of retinol every night. I'm using a 0.25% retinol. Okay. And, and that's enough. That's enough for me. You just need to use a little bit just to keep the skin active, especially if you are going to combine the skincare with some skin treatments as well, something like microneedling or, yeah. you know, the at-home devices that you have that's stimulating the skin. So you definitely don't want to be overstimulating. No, I'm sure my skin, if we could talk to it, would say, you are really overstimulating me and have been for the past 
three years that you've done this channel. <laughs> Leave me alone. And um, you mentioned the eye area. Actually, the um, within the skincare brand that I use, um, Alumia MD, there's a retinal eye gel, which is, is a retinal designed for the eye area. So it's a very gentle kind of lower dose of, of retinol that is um, encapsulated. So when, when you put in the air, put around that eye area, it slowly releases into the skin. So it's quite gentle and it doesn't cause irritation. It's a lot safer. So if you are looking for a vitamin A based product for the eye area, I definitely recommend that one. Okay, I shall look it up and link to it in the description below the video then so we can take a look at that. That wraps up my questions about tretinoin, but as I, as I use, I will be using it a little bit longer because, you know, I do like to push myself. Um, but thank you so much. As, as always, just so insightful and reassuring and full of common sense. Thank you. So I hope you found that conversation as helpful as I did. I do love to hear your thoughts, experiences and opinions. So let me know in the comments section. And Dr. Chen will be back on the channel very soon to tell us something the skincare industry really don't want us to hear about. And that's our overuse of products and moisturizer in particular. So make sure you don't miss it by hitting subscribe along with the notification bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.